You may have heard about, caught a glimpse of some of the back and forth between two of the richest uh, men in the world, um, uh, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, and things are, are heating up. I I do think that there were some things that even got said pu- or written publicly that I don't know if we have or should say on the radio, but they're, they're definitely... Um, going after each other. Well, Elon, at least, is going after Mark Zuckerberg. One thing I think is interesting, Clay, is you know that Twitter has to be doing something right. And I think it matters for the 2024 election. I think that will be... When I look at things that are more favorable to the Republicans this time around than they were in 2020, that I think we can reliably have at least one social media platform that will not just be a tool of the Democrats... Uh, I know there are others. There are a lot that are still going to be aligned against the Republican Party. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. But what happened to the New York Post story about the laptop, for example, that can't happen the same way when you have an open and and not to leave out rumble and truth. And there are some others that I think, um, but they just don't have the same critical mass that Twitter does. I do think it's very interesting um, that the left is so upset, is very upset about this. And in fact, I don't know, Clay, are we going to be able to continue to tweet knowing that uh, Joy Reid, for example, very upset about what's going on with all this free speech? Play clip five. Twitter might be on the slow road to obscurity as Mark Zuckerberg's rival app Threads has surpassed 100 million users in only five days. Meanwhile, Twitter users are mostly left with a ranting and raving Elon Musk and lots and lots of racists. It does feel like, I, okay, I'm just going to give you myself as an example. I'm somebody who, I stopped using Twitter quite a long time ago. I don't tweet. I don't want to give Elon any content. But every so often I would check it just as an aggregator, just to see if there's any news in there in between the Nazi tweets. After a while, I stopped doing that because it's like, I don't want to have to read through Nazi crap just to see what's in the news. Threads, since that has launched, there's to me, there's no reason to check Twitter anymore. All of the major you know, Nattle blogs on there, the Washington Post is on there. All of the stuff I would normally read, I can aggregate it on threads. Twitter now is useless to me. If people like me are leaving, I don't know how Twitter survives. <laughs> I think Twitter's going to survive, Clay. Uh, and I also think it's fascinating. Oh, there, so there are no racists on Facebook. That's an interesting That's an interesting take that she threw in there, too. All the racists are on Twitter. I can honestly say this. Um, I have no idea what people say about me on Facebook. I have no idea what people say about me on TikTok. I have no idea what people say about me on Instagram. I have no idea what people say about me on threads or uh, any of these other outlets, right? Because Twitter is where the news comes from. So if people take a shot at me, like Mark Cuban wants to come after me, I see it on Twitter. If he goes on threads and takes a shot at me, somebody's going to have to screenshot it, DM it to me, I think this is the challenge Trump has had in general with Truth Social. And Buck, somebody sent me something recently. They were like, you're getting ripped to shreds on Reddit for something I said. I was like, why do I care? Right? Like, I I, I mean, I don't even, I I don't go on Reddit. I I don't care if people on message boards have opinions. This reminds me uh, back in the day when I was full-time sports, Buck, all the message boards are super popular. And every now and then somebody would send me an email and they're like, hey, You have no idea what they're saying about you right now on Hog Haven or Crimson Cornucopia or whatever it's called is fired up about you. There are mean comments on a message. Like, so what do I care? It doesn't impact me in any way. Good. Meaning if people want to sound off on different platforms, we we believe in free speech. The, The fundamental issue has become the Democrat Party does not believe in free speech. Yes, in, in the most most clear and basic ways, they do not. And they'll say, "Oh, what about fire in a crowded theater?" And they don't even know that that's that's a Supreme Court case that was wrongly decided in favor of throwing a socialist anti-war activist in prison for distributing pamphlets against the First World War. They have no idea what they're talking about. Point is, they really do believe now that uh, if something is problematic politically or even emotionally for Democrats, it should be. Uh, shut down as much as possible, including through government action. And that's the part of that. That's why that court case, Missouri v. Biden, matters so much, because they they don't feel chastened. uh, They they don't feel at all 
embarrassed that this White House was actively suppressing people, right? I mean, was actively using the power of social media to shut down particularly election and COVID stuff. The COVID stuff, they were wrong about all of it. The election stuff, you know, depends on what we're talking about. Um, And yet, Clay, they have no, there's no shame for them in being censors. This is what their team has decided, which is why they hate Twitter so much. They hate Twitter because we haven't seen it censoring the right the way that all the other social media platforms have for about the last decade. Now, the one thing that I do think is interesting, Buck, is if there actually ended up being a more splintered universe of social media, I think what might end up happening is the media's job becomes more difficult because they can cover controversies that erupt on Twitter easily. Have you ever seen a controversy erupt on LinkedIn? I'm I'm just asking. Like, I signed up for LinkedIn 20 years ago. I don't know what my password is. Somehow I still get emails about it. I know people post things on LinkedIn. Uh, I The media, 95% of their stories originate from Twitter. I, I have to say, I've have you had the experience where someone finally gets to you on Twitter or email, and they're like, why don't you respond? And you're like, what, what are you talking about? They're like, I sent you a LinkedIn message and you look, you have some LinkedIn message from five years ago. Like, I don't know, unless you're looking for a job, I don't know anyone who's checking their LinkedIn messages. I don't even know how to log into LinkedIn. So yeah, there's probably a thousand messages that have stacked up there over the last decade. And yeah, that's really funny. I, and people are like, hey, I sent you eight LinkedIn's and you didn't respond. It's like, yeah, it's probably sent me eight MySpaces too. My point on it is, I actually wonder if Twitter wasn't the centrality of the locus for the media ecosystem. I don't think that threads is going to become it. I think it just becomes so diffuse that there's nothing there. And I would submit, I'm curious if you would agree, the reason why Twitter has some cogency is because of different opinions. Echo chambers aren't entertaining to visit. The idea that somebody might get piled on for doing something stupid or that two people could have legitimately different opinions and go to head to head in a 280 character debate at a time, it's a bit stupid, but conflict draws eyeballs, right? If you watch any television show, it doesn't begin and they lived happily ever after. There is a conflict somewhere, a protagonist and an antagonist that is necessary to draw attention. If you just create a left-wing echo chamber, it doesn't work as a platform. Instagram works. Why does it work, Buck? Because people like looking at hot chicks. If you took away, if, if Mark Zuckerberg came out tomorrow and said, hey, from this point forward, only women will be featured in burkas, Instagram would cease to exist overnight. Instagram is basically a place where hot chicks post photos, and that's why the entire app works. It's like Stuff Magazine, Playboy, Maxim all rolled into one. I have a lot of puppies and steak cooking on my Instagram. (laughs) All right. Look, when I go into videos, I see only Family Feud, uh, uh, like my real section. I see, I love Steve Harvey. All I get is Family Feud, uh, like uh, funny answers, right? My wife makes fun of me. Because at bedtime, I'll scroll through and just watch silly uh, family feud answers. That's what pops up on my Instagram. But if they took away hot chicks, Instagram would cease to exist tomorrow. Instagram doesn't exist, my point is, as a mechanism for conflict. Twitter exists for conflict, okay? Can can I say... Without that, it's an echo chamber. It ceases to have any power. have Have you noticed that... I mean, I remember, uh, especially back in the day... Um, getting like dragged on Twitter. And what you realize is that if you were on the right, I mean, I'm not sure. Well, you probably had this with sports, but you would get all of a sudden you'd be like, wait, I have a, we're all my, you would just be getting pummeled from all sides and you'd realize, Oh, I'm limited. Like I'm shadow banned. So my people can't see anything, but left wing lunatics all over the internet can pile on ceaselessly. I don't see these pylons any, no, not just me in general. I don't see these pylons anymore, which goes to what we've learned about Twitter, which is that it was a rigged Thunderdome where conservatives in particular, all of a sudden something got controversial. Your reach would get shut down and then you'd get ratioed by the left wing lunatic brigade saying whatever they want. I mean, threatening to kill you and being completely insane. 
and the Twitter employees were all, this is great, more of this. And that was actually happening there. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. I also think the whole trending thing, people have recognized that on some level, I mean, it's kind of just free advertising. Uh, what, what are you going to do? You're gonna, it, it, I can't imagine a scenario where because of something that I tweet that I'm not allowed to come on the radio or I'm not allowed to go on television. I mean, it would have to be, I've been on Twitter since 2009. My opinions are all out there. It would have to be like some act of violence almost for me where I would lose a job, right? In other words, cancel culture has lost much of its power if you come through on the other side of cancel culture. And I think both you and I have uh, in, in, in many ways. Um, but I just, I don't buy into this idea that, and, and I would say this the same thing for Truth Social or Gab or uh, Parler. They tried to create a conservative version of Twitter and none of them really worked because that's Twitter was where the conversation was. I don't think Threads is suddenly going to create a liberal conversation. It's not going to work long term.